Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Knight Institute Symposium on Data and Democracy. It's great to have so many people here. The symposium centers on a very simple question. What information do we need, uh, all of us, in order to participate meaningfully in self-government? This question has been asked many times before, but it seems worth asking it again for a number of reasons. New technology has made it possible for powerful actors to collect more information and to do much more with the information they collect. The decisions that affect our lives are increasingly being made by algorithms that are opaque even to their creators. And the powerful actors that have the most influence over our democracy now include private corporations as well as governments. It's always been true, as Madison famously said, that people who mean to be their own governors need to arm themselves with the power that knowledge gives. But what does this mean in the era of big data, machine learning, and private control of the public square? What we want to explore today and tomorrow is how the law needs to change in order to ensure that citizens have the information they need in order to make democracy work and to make it work for them. We're excited to be hosting this symposium with Yale Law School's Amy Kapczynski and the Law and Political Economy Project. Professor Kapczynski is a truly visionary legal scholar who has thought as deeply as anyone about public accountability of private power. It's really been an incredible privilege for all of us at the Knight Institute to host her as a visiting scholar and to work with her on this symposium. Before I turn this over to her, let me just thank a few other people. Katie Glenn Bass, our research director, has overseen this project from the outset and has worked closely with Amy in developing the program and in editing participants' papers. Many other Knight Institute staff, including Lorraine Kenny, Candace White, Madeline Wood, Chan Rajendra Nicolucci, contributed to this event as well. Thank you to all of them. And thanks also to the symposium authors the papers are really everything we'd hoped they would be. Uh, they're ambitious, they're illuminating, they're lively. I feel very confident that the discussions today and tomorrow will share those virtues. Thanks again to all of you for joining us and let me turn this over to Professor Kapczynski. Thanks so much. I'm delighted to be here with you all today and I wanna to begin by thanking Jamil and Katie and everyone at night it's been a really wonderful privilege to be a visiting scholar there. Um, they are a first rate group of legal thinkers and litigators, and I've learned a great deal from them. They've also done a masterful job of organizing this event and bringing us all together. And to, to find that combination of legal skills and acuity and commitment to real intellectual exchange all in one place is quite unusual. And I think I, I've been very privileged to, to learn with them and I think um, it's really helped shape the event that lies before us. So when we planned this event, we thought, of course, that we would be in person. And we lose a great deal by not being able to be together. It breaks my heart. But um, we also gain something, which is that we have participants, hundreds of them, in fact, signed up from many different parts of the country and, in fact, the world. And so thanks so much out there in Zoom land for joining us. But the idea of this symposium is, is I'll say a few words about that and then introduce what's coming ahead of us in the coming days. Um, the idea is, is to address a puzzle and put it in its sort of broadest sense. It is what does the age of big data and algorithmic governance mean for our democracy and how might law need to change in order to adapt to rising forms of power, often private power, that operate through manipulation of data, algorithms, AI, and so forth. And the backdrop, as Jamil alluded to, are the tremendous advances in digital computing power and networking that have transformed so many aspects of our lives. Moore's law operating over decades has enabled this collection, storage, and continuous updating of vast forms of data, ubiquitous sensors and digital networks combined with new algorithmic and machine learning techniques have made possible new ways of knowing and acting that have already had significant impact in both the public and private spheres are also creating significant challenges for our democracy. So government actors are allocating Medicaid resources and orienting policing and prosecution using algorithmic and data intensive approaches, often in conjunction with private actors. So can these kinds of systems be reconciled with due process, with non-discrimination? What challenges do they pose for accountability? There are new capacities to harvest and analyze data that are impacting key intermediary institutions for self-government, such as political parties. They're influencing the infrastructure of elections and the free press, the public sphere. 
New modes of data processing also shape a wide variety of products from driverless cars to health apps to Facebook and Instagram. And all of these shape our society. If an algorithm decides who can speak, for example, and is owned by a private company whose reven revenues are driven by clicks, how do we ensure free speech? If a state is regulating to protect against toxic chemicals or climate change, and that requires processing enormous troves of data, how do regulators do that well? And how does the public check their work? Will citizens, regulators, and legislators be able to access the data and information that they need to understand and shape these new technologies and powers? Uh, in many dimensions, the rights of corporate actors have grown stronger in recent decades, for example, via protection of commercial speech and trade secrets. So in this context, one of the questions that we're gathered to think about is, does the public have the power it needs to influence the shape of our increasingly data-intensive society? And how do we hold accountable a state that also has growing data power? Uh, for example, where prosecutors can use predictive analytics, but defense attorneys cannot. So this conference is co-sponsored by Knight and the Law and Political Economy Project. I direct the Law and Political Economy Project with my colleagues, David Graywall, Jed Purdy, and Cynthia Rahman. We have a wonderful staff, um, Corinne Laylock and Raul Carrillo, who have also helped me think very much about these questions. Um, our project is a scholarly one housed at Yale Law School that aims to bring questions of political economy back to the center of legal analysis. Broadly, we're criticizing what some of us have called in a piece in the Yale Law Journal, the 20th century synthesis and legal thought that has treated markets as places that have to be freed to follow their own rules and where the rights we have as citizens have become increasingly hollow. So we believe that law and legal theory in recent decades have been implicated, in fact, in the rising inequality and concentration of private power and that we need to use law instead to build collective democratic power over our economy and society and a truly inclusive democracy. Our view is that asking questions about our democracy also requires us to ask questions about the right allocation of power between private and public and how to build a more genuinely deep, deep democracy. Thinking in, to, about democracy, not just as a thin commitment to voting or elections, although these are of course important and in fundamental ways not guaranteed to us today, but also thinking about democracy as a form of distributed power um, and as realized only when in fact, ordinary people have authority over, uh, collective authority over decisions in their lives. And so of course, part of thinking about democracy in a fixed sense in this way, uh, requires us to think about economic power, about power dynamics is expressed in, in race, for example, because these two are important to democracy. So in the broadest sense, this uh, symposium is trying to pull together all of these kinds of ideas, a thick sense of democracy that's sensitive to questions of political economy, uh, and uh, the fundamental puzzles that the rise of new data intensive technologies pose for a democratic system of government. So now I just wanna give you a brief sense of the wonderful papers and panels we have ahead of us to help us engage these questions. The first, which starts immediately after this is entitled Theories of Democratic Regulation and Lawmaking in the Big Data Era. We have three papers, Aziz Huck of the University of Chicago Law School and Kino Cuellar of both Stanford Law School and a justice on the California Supreme Court, uh, presenting one paper, Julie Cullen of Georgetown, uh, another, Kyle Brennan Marquez at the University of Connecticut School of Law and Daniel Susser at Penn State University, and then a commentary uh, from Yahai Bankler at Harvard Law. This panel is gonna start us out with some very rich theoretical accounts that will set the stage for our discussions, talking about how the rise of algorithmic systems and AI challenge conventional strategies of democratic governance. For example, asking whether legal responses to the new intermediaries like Facebook can succeed if they're built around traditional models of individual consent and control and asking fundamental questions about how changes in data processing power might alter the very structure of our economy. For example, by changing who has what kinds of information and therefore power. The second panel will begin at 2.30 called Public Will Formation and Big Data. Uh, it's formed around some wonderful papers, two of them. The first by Dan Book at Colgate University and Dana Boyd at Data and Society. And the second by Bertrand Ross at the University of California Berkeley School of Law and Douglas Spencer at the University of Connecticut School of Law. And we'll have commentary by Ethan Zuckerman at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst, and also a new Knight First Amendment Institute visiting scholar. So this pair of papers could not be more timely. We have new Supreme Court case on census, in fact, very recently, and an election barreling down upon us. And that is very substantially the theme of these two papers, Book and Boyd. We'll talk about the history and techno politics of the census and ask whether the legitimacy of data can ever come, quote, from the data itself or instead relies on broader social and political structures. And Ross and Spencer will describe the relationship between the availability of more data on voting and parties' neglect of 
for voters and propose some solutions. Tomorrow at noon, we have a panel on data publicity and public control with three papers, Frank Pascali from Brooklyn Law School, Wendy Wagner from University of Texas School of Law, writing with Martin Murillo, the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, and then Rebecca Wexler, also from the University of California at Berkeley with comments from Margaret Kaminsky. Pascal's paper describes the need for algorithmic governance to respond to big data analytics. Wagner and Murillo take on challenges for agencies like the EPA in a big data environment. And Wexler brings our conversation to the criminal law domain and how to think about and what to do about the increasingly asymmetric power of prosecutors to use big data technologies. After that, we'll have a keynote from Julia Anglin. She's an award-winning investigative journalist and editor-in-chief at The Markup, a nonprofit newsroom. She's done wonderful work investigating the impacts of technology and society, and she'll be discussing some of that exciting work with us. The last panel will be tomorrow at 2.30 p.m engineering access to data and algorithms. We'll have three papers. Uh, Hannah block Weber from Texas A&M University School of Law presents one. John Bowers at, at the Harvard Berkman Klein Center. Elaine Seddenberg also at the Berkman Klein Center and Facebook and Jonathan Zittrain at Harvard University will be presenting another. And then Matthias Vermeulen at AWO with comments by Evelyn Duke, a lecturer on law and SJD Kennedy at Harvard Law School. And these papers are gonna get us deep into the nuts and bolts of how we know or might know how AI systems and algorithms work, how does law and practices and institutions need to change to give us real access or give researchers real access, considering things like FOIA law, other private steps companies might take. So researchers, researchers and the public can understand more about the technologies that influence our lives. So exciting first, a uh, couple of days ahead of us, and uh, now we'll move on to the first panel.